In all of us, uh, there are probably conversions and transformations from one sense into another. Um, certainly for myself, as I'm becoming somewhat deaf, I find I need to look at people. Um, this sharpens my hearing. I don't feel that I'm getting particularly a better visual picture. The added visual information is turned into to hearing. One of the people I interviewed uh, who had lost his sight when he was uh, at college in his early 20s. Um, he said that when he read Braille with his right index finger, he saw the raised dots in his mind's eye that uh, he didn't feel it in his finger, he saw it. And experiments have been done with functional brain imagery in people like this. And it has found that not only the tactile parts of the brain, but the visual cortex is being activated as well. And the visual parts of the brain do not atrophy after one becomes blind. Paradoxically, they may become hyperactive and hyper-responsive. Um, partly to inputs from other senses so that they, uh, they become available uh, for touch, for hearing, for smell, um, and uh, partly for, for, for internal imagery and also for converting things to, um, to imagery. In fact, many blind children are verbally precocious and adept at visual description so much so that they may deceive others and maybe to some extent deceive themselves that they are seeing. Uh, certainly Helen Keller is, is a virtuoso at, at visual description. Um, uh, um, Arlene, who um, sees uh, what is, uh, who sees a, a talking book as a, a line of print which fatigues her eyes, loves traveling with people and will have them describe what they are seeing in museums or buildings, boats, rivers, and she, f these immediately conjure up images for her and she may then um, ask questions based on the images and, uh, and, uh, and, and force the seeing people to see more. I found myself wondering about the range of visualization in anybody and the extent to which this might determine uh, their reactions to blindness, whether they would keep it or lose it. Studies were done on this in the 1880s by Francis Galton. He had a questionnaire in which he would ask people, visualize your breakfast table, uh, what was on it, exactly where, where was everything. Um, and can you visualize your wife? Have her sit in a chair, have her stand up, have her move through quarter of a circle, walk forward, walk backwards. And from this, Galton thought that the range of visual imagery could go from almost zero to uh, something which, which could be, um, uh, was so plastic that it could almost be manipulated. It was almost mistakable for reality and could be manipulated by people to form what we would now call a virtual reality. I do very badly myself on Galton's tests. I can't visualize my breakfast table and I can't actually visualize anyone, let alone make them stand up and, and turn through a court for circle.